last night? Why? Why is it? So, so you are upset with me. You gotta try we to only up a little bit. special occasion. No, no, that's usually my every day. That's every day, but then my, today I got home and then I had a little bit of time to uh, take my suit off and just throw in a, on another shirt. A little more comfortable. Let's come on home and relax. I know what you mean. That's right. <laughs> yes, indeed. Thank you for attending that oh, meeting I'm, as well. Oh, that, that was a good meeting. Really good meeting. Awesome, awesome. Oh. So they just gave you more work to do, right? <laughs> my every day <laughs> really yep yeah, that's the every day yes indeed but i love it i can't complain especially the paycheck <laughs> yeah i'm for fortunate enough to be able to do what i love for a living so it's all good haven't really been keeping up with the news as well as I should have are the uh, protesters still at the site or have it died down a little bit oh no they're still active oh yeah they're definitely still still out there oh really yep yeah, yep yeah. it must it must be nice to be able to just do something like that not have to worry about where you you know where you're gonna eat where you go to sleep what you know there has to be some magic to that but we just don't understand you know that's right i think so too i definitely didn't didn't get that memo because living in tree houses in storms like today <laughs> you gotta something else has to be going on that i just don't understand right right has it stopped raining where you are it has, yep. But I drove through it uh, heading home. Oh, really? Mm -hmm. Well, I, I'm still at the office. It started storming just as about the time I was getting ready to get out of here to run home and get set up for the meeting. I'm like, I might as well just sit here and go and do the meeting from here, you know? Yep, yep. I was asking uh, uh, Tim Peak last night, I'm like, you don't ever get a chance to go home, do you? <laughs> he said, no, because I uh, saw him a few weeks ago at another evening meeting that you know ran pretty long. And I'm like, he said, well, you know, this is the job and I'm only going to be doing this for a few more years. <laughs> like, I okay. know. I know. Yeah. Yep. He's, he's, uh, he's got to be tired. I mean, I, listen, it's a, Law enforcement is a, a full-time thing. I mean, it's a every day, all day long thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And when I was telling him, I was, of course, when you get those big promotions, you know you're going to get more work so uh, mm -hmm. and longer hours. So, And he said, big promotions. I'm like, yeah, big promotions. That's right. <laughs> hey, Marshall, who got the big promotion? <laughs> nobody <laughs> oh nobody I, I was ready like let's get some champagne out let's celebrate i was ready for a party and let's have a, have a celebration here that's right. i was hoping it was i was hoping it was me I know. <laughs> <laughs> listen I'm, I'm about to start we're about to start giving out promotions in this meeting you get a promotion you get a, everybody's about to get one i love it i love it it just, it has to come with a pay raise because I don't want more responsibility with no more money. Well, see, uh -oh. that, that's, all, that's all they seem to be giving out, Allison, you know? I, <laughs> titles. <laughs> you're you're going to get 10 times what you're, what you're making now. <laughs> <laughs> 
one of the police officers uh, called me to tell me that he had been transferred from my area. And I'm like, oh, congratulations on your promotion. He said, well, the reason was really, it was not a promotion. I just, just a, a line item transfer. <laughs> I ever heard of it referred to that as a line item transfer. He said, you get no money, you just go across the line and you get more work. I'm like, okay. Mm -hmm. That's something new every day. That's it. He sounds like a businessman. <laughs> Is that a dog or a child in the background? It's a child. It it's a child in my I house. Say, I, can, I, okay. I was going to say, if it was my house, it was a dog. Okay. <laughs> oh, gosh. Yeah, I have a I have a house full right now. So uh, please excuse me if you hear children or, or or the dog for that matter. Anyone's likely to join this call. Fine. You guys can get to know my family. Thank you. You got a cute family. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> They'll do in a pinch. <laughs> hey, Chief McMore, thanks for joining. And Chief Tyus, thanks for joining as well. Hey, uh, good evening, guys. everyone. Can you hear me? Yep. Oh, yeah. Well, it's good to see everybody. We'll get, get moving in a, about two minutes here. Since we haven't started, my children are fairly quiet. So the moment I start talking, you'll hear from them. Oh, here we go. There's one. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> Putting Canto on. <laughs> All right, we'll give it just a few minutes to uh, bring <clears throat> a few more folks on into the meeting. Uh, in the waiting room, I do see uh, a couple of folks with just first names. And so um, if you are a member of the stakeholder advisor committee, uh, you can either send me a text or uh, adjust your name on there and I will bring you over. Hello, everyone. Hey, Jen. Hello, How good evening. <laughs> hey, Jacqueline, good evening. Hello. Thank you for joining. Mm -hmm. Man, I'm sure if I could give it, if we could give it just, <laughs> uh, uh, just another minute or so, if you don't mind. Absolutely, no problem. Good evening, everyone. Hi, how are you? Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Hello, Nicole, Sean, I see you're here now. Hello. Hello. Hey, good evening. Madam Chair, I know it's a couple minutes after, so if we'd like to go ahead, then I'm happy to um, again announce uh, anyone who comes into the meeting after roll call. That sounds good. Let's go ahead and get this show on the road. Um, quick welcome to you all. Thank you so much for taking the time to join us uh, this evening. Uh, committee members, as always. This meeting is being recorded. Time, uh, this evening as, oops, I hear something. Sorry, it was the recording okay. notice. 
Oh, no worries, no worries. Uh, again, committee members, thank you for giving your time this evening. And for those of you who are attending in the audience, thank you for taking the time out of your day uh, to participate and, and listen in on, on what we are doing this evening. Um, with that, um, let's go ahead and move on into our roll call. Uh, Madam Co-Chair, Ms. Williams, can you proceed with the roll call for us? Absolutely, and I have the meeting started at 6.03 p.m. Um, so Ms. Clark? Present. Ms. Culp? Present. Ms. Phillips? Ann, I know I heard you earlier. Yeah, I'm here, present. Okay. Uh, Ms. Nichols? Here. Ms. Lee? As a note, Sharon, I got a call from Ms. Lee. She's having a challenge with her um, internet connection today, so she may join us via phone, uh, but she can't get on the actual Zoom. Okay, I just put excuse. Uh, Ms. Rainey? Here. Uh, Chief Sherbaugh? You have Chief, Chief Tyus in for Chief Sherbaugh. Oh, Chief Tyus, okay, thank you. Um, Sharon Williams is gonna say here. Uh, Mr. Billingsley? Here. Uh, Ms. Turner? Ms. Turner? I'll put her down as, as absent. Ms. Morado? Present. Ms. Taylor? Okay, Ms. Tucker? Wow. Uh, Chief Acklemore? Here. Yep, Ms. Atwaters? Uh, Mr. Basin? Here. Oh, Ms. Basin, my apologies. Um, Ms. Burks? Wow. Um, and then uh, Mr. Hillis? Okay, let me just check and see. One, two, three, four, five. Six. We have six absences. Okay. Thank you very much, Ms. Williams. Oops, sorry. With that, do we have quorum this evening? Yeah, I'm actually checking. Um, okay. Uh, also, uh, Ms. Burks actually is on her way into the room. She's uh, coming over. Fantastic. We do have quorum, Madam Chair. Thank you so much. With that, welcome to the meeting, Ms. Burks. We have you on here with us this evening. Um, just a uh, quick move forward um, into the adoption of both our agenda and minutes. I'd like to accomplish that as one, one item. Um, and so I will go ahead and uh, motion to adopt both the agenda and the minutes. Can I get a second? I second. Who was that? Ms. Rainey? Yeah. Yes. Okay. Perfect. If there are any objections to adopting um, either the agenda or the minutes, please speak now. All righty, with that, we can move forward. Uh, both the agenda and the minutes have been adopted. And um, we can move right into our security update this evening. Chief Tyus, will you be giving us the security update? Chief Tyus, I see you're off mute, but we can not hear you, sir. Still nothing. Let's let's go ahead and um, if we can maybe give that a moment. If, if we need to, we can move forward into the fire rescue presentation and circle back to Chief Tyus as needed. Um, is Bree here? I'm not sure if I see her. Yes, oh, I can. Bree, <laughs> there you are. Yes, Wonderful. all right. 
If you could do us a favor and go ahead and put the uh, presentation up um, for us this evening. Um, Chief Tyus has pre-recorded his presentation. I know he's a little under the weather this evening, so it'll make it a little bit easier if we can move through this with the, the pre-recorded uh, presentation. So if we can put that up and then we can answer questions following the presentation. Can you all see my screen with the agenda on there? Yes. yes. Okay, good. I wanna make sure and then. Um, Chief McLemore, I don't know if you wanna do an introduction. I can just start playing this and also please let me know um, if y'all are not hearing this audio. I wanna make sure that y'all are able to do that. I'm gonna first off apologize. You can go ahead and start it. I, I did this a few weeks ago and I would do it live, but I had COVID uh, over the last week and a half. And if I talk for a long time, <coughs> I start coughing a little bit. So did you go ahead and play it? It, it, it suffice. Thank you. Hey, good afternoon, everyone. This is James Mathlamore with the Atlanta Fire Rescue Department. Uh, I currently serve as first deputy chief. I'm here this evening to discuss the importance of the Public Safety Training Center um, to the city of Atlanta and to our organization. I'm going to jump into my presentation by sharing the screen here shortly. All right. A purpose. For us to have this training center, um, a couple of things that will happen for us. Uh, it will boost morale, improve retention, recruit efficiently for public safety personnel, uh, receive updated training, geared toward bettering the community of Atlanta. And this physical space will ensure that our firefighters are receiving top-notch training for the 21st century. A couple of the needs, such as the burn building being built in the first phase, uh, this allows us to maximize the points for the insurance services office, the ISO rating, which Atlanta currently has a number one rating, um, which benefits insurance costs throughout the city. Um, it covers communications, uh, fire department, and um, water supply. So we are doing great. And we maintain a number one rating at this time. Also, it allows AFRD the ability to reinstate our acting officer in charge program. This program, allows younger members and members with wanting to learn how to be in charge of a unit to get the proper training, to put them through live scenarios, something that we are kind of has been placed on the back burner due to our lack of having a uh, training facility. Also, it will grant members the opportunity to participate in live training evolutions, something that we do called minimum company standards allows us to each unit to go out, perform, um, test their skills, uh, make adjustments when needed, and just to make a better overall uh, department and member for the organization. Next, the driving course. That would definitely benefit us um, bringing our driving modules back. Um, by having a training course that allows us and members to support staffing as extra engine drivers, truck drivers. There's a lot of training and preparation that goes into those members that you see driving the engines, or driving the uh, tiller uh, trucks, you know, the ones that have a driver in the front and the driver in the rear. Uh, there's a lot of training or specialized training that goes with that preparation and space needed for those starting out. And that's something that we're missing out by not having an uh, active driver's course. By having this in that first uh, wave would allow us to, you know, facilitate more sergeant exams, get more people passed up, and to do uh, annual training to make sure our knowledge, skills, and abilities 
are up to speed to make a better driver throughout the city on emergency calls. Um, next, having a mock fire station built, it definitely will allow us to conduct training indoors when there's an event of inclement weather. Um, this also allows the crews to become acclimated to the fire station culture prior to becoming or going into field operations. So while in recruit training, they can actually be in a fire station learning uh, what to do, how to do, how to respond on the unit. Um, also, conduct real-time response training for officers, apparatus operators, and firefighters. Um, that the building is sure that we could have more training, just the acclimation of becoming a firefighter. Also, in this fire station, um, it will have showers, laundry capability that are consistent with our cancer prevention initiatives that we have throughout the city. And also, it will provide a location to store apparatus in an effort to expand their service life for training. So, you know, that would definitely uh, support our, uh, our cause and our training facility. Next. Having the fire safety facilities, having this area, having the training center allows us to do more specialized training. So uh, having gas props, overturn tanker evolutions, uh, having the ability to form and practice swift water in uh, recovery ponds and being able to just hone in our skill because we do have Nancy Creek, Peachtree Creek, in the Chattahoochee River that come through the city of Atlanta and from time to time we respond on calls to aid and assist members, I mean individuals and citizens that may have been trapped or um, lost their canoe or what have you in the water. So uh, definitely um, gives us that opportunity to uh, further our training and also in technical rescue where we have collapse, uh, high rise road rescue, uh, confined space, uh, all of those technical uh, components of what we do, we will be allowed to train here and have more classes here to make sure or ensure that uh, our organization is well trained and well prepared to be any uh, incident that may come our way. So in conclusion, um, having the training center built would ensure our burn building, having a place to burn to perform uh, drills uh, and recruit training and uh, updates and continuing ed classes to make sure that our firefighters are up to date in the latest techniques in firefighting. The driving course uh, brings about the ability to train drivers, to continue training drivers, um, get more people involved with training so that when we have sergeant's exams or there's a promotion to the sergeant position, we have a place to feel and take care of the training and provide a testing site to move forward. Currently, uh, we, we do not have one. Um, and this will be a definite attribute to uh, city of Atlanta. And again, a mock fire station. Uh, I've seen this in other cities throughout Florida where they have actual training stations for uh, members uh, doing EMS work, uh, firefighting, just learning the firefighter culture and what to do, how to do, how to respond, what it actually feels like would truly enhance what we do here in the city of Atlanta. Um, also, fire safety facilities, having that ability to uh, train, uh, specialized training, having a place to go, having a place to uh, regional train, bring other cities in when we do regional training, when we work with our partners throughout the metro area, having that location and having a enhanced 21st century uh, location speaks volumes to what we do here in the city. And it provides a long-term solution, uh, a long-term solution. So 
With that being said, I know in my 30 years, um, we've moved from building, from building location to location. But now to have a long-term solution over the next, you know, 30, 40, 50 years uh, speaks volumes. And that would enhance uh, the fire department, not only, you know, the fire department, but all of public safety, having that solution, having that place where we can meet regionally, enhance other uh, metro areas to come in for training. Uh, it just puts Atlanta on the, the pinnacle of cities throughout the country. And uh, we are a top-notch organization. And uh, moving to this uh, top-notch training facility would uh, just do wonders. So uh, I'm going to conclude my presentation here. And uh, if you have any questions, feel free to uh, email me. And uh, thanks a lot for the opportunity to share um, the perspective of Atlanta Fire Rescue Department in regards to the uh, training center. Thank you and have a good evening. Thank you so much, uh, Chief McElmore, for that presentation. Um, okay. I will... Don't beat that guy up too bad. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, <laughs> oh goodness well i will open the floor if anyone has any questions uh please please feel free to ask them now or if, if would you prefer that we have questions sent to you to be answered via email or no, answered I, later? i'll let you know when i stop when i can okay. I, I take questions yeah mm -hmm. okay perfect i see uh miss williams your hand is raised the floor is yours yeah just a quick question uh, you mentioned that there's a correlation between training and our insurance rates Yes. Um, and could you just elaborate on that? Okay, so the ISO rating, um, the city currently has a, a rating of one. Uh, they come out every uh, four or five years. They assess the uh, water supply through watershed management. They, they assess the water, the fire department's training, and the E911 communications. There's an algorithm they use and assign a score, and the lower your score of the better um, your uh, the better insurance rates you'll receive in the business community. That's fantastic. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Great question. Anyone else? Okay, Madam Chair, I know I'm I know I'm not <laughs> yes. a committee member, but if you wouldn't mind, the only one thing I'd like to just um, ask Chief McLemore to ex expand. Absolutely not. Okay. <laughs> no, I'm uh, kidding. Go for it. <laughs> the only, go, only, go for it. <laughs> only question was about, Chief, if you could just talk about the ability for the facility to make the connection between fire rescue training and um, APD training and how this will allow for training together, because it's my yeah. understanding that you don't have that ability or capability now. Yeah, great question. Um, having the ability, because a, a lot of times when we have incidents, we all meet in the JOC and we get it done and we work together. And a lot of us have worked together through the years and we know our partners, but allowing that training center, that opens the door for different classes, different scenarios, different tabletop exercises, a central location to house everybody, to work together and to meet our comrades on the other side of PD corrections in meeting and, and seeing them more often just makes for a better um, organization in the event of something happening. So you know that person who will be in the JOC or you know that person on the scene. It just makes for a better camaraderie across the city. It's great now, but it will be even greater when we blend everyone together. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Wonderful. Thank you for that. That gives a lot of clarity. Are there any additional questions? All right, Chief McLemore, it looks like you, sir, are off the hook for tonight. Um, okay, I survived. Okay. <laughs> you did, you did. All right. <laughs> Well, thank you for your presentation this evening, and I'm sure if more questions do pop up, um, committee members will be able to send those forward. Um, in the interest of, of moving forward, let's uh, circle back around to Chief Tyus and see if we can get the security update from Atlanta Police. 
hey, good good evening. Sometimes you just have to be smarter than the equipment you're working with. So um, <laughs> not to be defeated, I got it figured out here. So good evening, everybody. Um, I'll jump right in it since I'm the cause of us um, running behind now. Um, as always, since we last spoke, um, my team has been out to the Public Safety Training Center at least twice a week. And um, we go out there to that location suite for trespassers and contraband. We did not get out there as much because um, obviously, you know, everybody know we had the great road race um, 4th of July. So all our officers were working 12 hour shifts that week. So they were not able to get to the location. However, we went back there and when we went back there, we noticed that they had came to the location um, did a little simple stuff like putting um, concrete um, in the gates and chain padlocking our gates and things. Things the normal things they've always done to try to defeat us. Um, it simply slows us down a little bit. Um, we continue to go through the property. We were not met by any trespassers on the property. However, we can see evidence of them being on the property. Um, there's a couple of tree houses um, that we will have removed from the property. Um, so we continue. Um, I know what everybody's angst was, was we noticed cameras, our flock cameras were being damaged. Um, more importantly, the ones on Constitution, Key Road, and the one at Boulder Walk Subdivision. So all those cameras were damaged. And I think the one at Boulder Walk Subdivision was actually damaged twice. It went back down. So we, we heard about that. So um, Major Canton and Major Robinson, the cab, have been working together. Um, Major Robinson has promised us he's going to step up his patrol in that area. And we've also put those cameras in our video integration center so that somebody's looking at those cameras 24 hours a day, um, especially that one on the wall. So we put that one up on our big screen so that we have eyes on that camera. And um, we have started our investigation. We have included our federal and state partners in this investigation. Um, so we'll, we will be looking at electronic signals and seeing if we can identify the people that were involved in this. Um, our posture continues the same out there. We will not be deterred. Um, we're going to maintain that site as um, the fire just stated. Um, we want a great training center so that we can collaborate with fire and give the citizens of Atlanta, you know, the best trained police officers and firefighters that they have. So um, at this time, I'll take any questions. Oh, one final thing. We did notice that um, the Defend the Forest does have a week of action um, starting July 23rd through July 31st. Um, they have some items on their group like medic training and alcohol anonymous meetings. So we will continue to monitor those holes through our Homeland Security and um, we'll be ready to um, defend mm -hmm. any um, illegal activities that may occur out there on that property. Mm -hmm. So I'll take any questions that you all may have at this time. Absolutely. Thank you for that update. Um, committee members, do we have questions? This is Sharon. I, I would just like to just confirm that no one else has been hurt. No additional officers, no developers, no um, construction or, or engineering teams were hurt. No, ma'am. Um, when we're out there in the woods, we have a very um, I won't call it an aggressive posture, but we have enough officers. So when we go in the woods, there are at least four officers assigned to any piece of equipment that go in there in the woods. So any developer that go in there, they will have a minimum of four officers that are walking step by step with them as they go into that property. So no, thankfully, no officers and no construction workers have been hurt. But thank you for your concern on that. Thank you. I do have a question, um, if no one else does. I am curious to know, uh, with Boulder Walk falling at the um, center of some of the more recent activity, um, I know that the, the flock devices that are outside of the community have been um, damaged, as well as the one just inside the entrance. And so um, not only do we have, we have footage um, of individuals actually trying to tear down uh, the equipment from um, our community-owned cameras, and so I think that the individuals that were attempting to tear down some of the flock equipment noticed that the Boulder Walk cameras were catching their activity and then they turned their sights on uh, those cameras in an, in an attempt to damage those as well. Um, and so, um, and I've been meaning to email about this and this is entirely my fault for not um, moving on that quick enough, but I'm curious to know 
um, you know, what steps are in place to help um, mitigate that. I know that they also um, painted some colorful words on our um, community fence, um, which is something that, you know, again, our HOA pays for and maintains. And it's something that says um, F Cop City, um, except it, it obviously the word is spelled out and that is uh, right on the entrance to our community. Um, and so we continue to see that damage. And I understand that people are, you know, there are those who are upset about this project um, for a variety of reasons, but uh, Boulder Walk is uh, kind of finding itself in, in the midst of their grasp, if you will. So can you talk a little bit more about what can, what can be in place there? Sure. Um, and so uh, what happening now at that location? So now that group has the um, attention of four different entities, the Atlanta Police sure. Department, the Cap County Police Department, our GBI, and our FBI partners. So we are all looking at that because we recognize, you know, if they come after us, we're fine. We're prepared to defend ourselves, but you all are kind of innocent bystanders. So we do not want you all to take the brunt of what, you know, of something we're doing out there. Because as I said, our posture is very aggressive in the woods. So they have actually stopped coming to the woods and they're going to, um, different target target rich environments they started going to cobb county for a while they went out to Conyers and, and started um committing mayhem so what we do, what we do anytime we see that we partner with whatever local police department is out there and and um we have a commitment from the cab county that they will put police officers in that area they will have officers on patrol in that area they've committed to us that they will work with us to have put some ucs out there so we're committed to keeping that neighborhood safe over there, the Boulder Walk community. Um, what we need from you all is immediately, if you see something suspicious, please dial 911. Even if it's a false alarm, we'd rather you err on the side of caution in that community at this time. Absolutely, and I will share that out with my neighbors as well so that um, you know they understand what's at play here. It's unfortunate that we're in this situation, but um, hopefully uh, the tides turn in short order. Yes, hopefully they will. Thank you for that. Are there any other questions? Okay, well, it, that sounds good. It looks like everyone has asked all of the questions that they have for this evening. If anything um, comes up, committee members, please make sure to send forward your questions so that we can make sure that you get answers. I'm sure this uh, week of action may uh, include some updates. Will you be able to email those out to the committee as needed? I will. Thanks to your robust email list, I will get that out to the committee. Any updates that I see fit for you all. Perfect. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Thank you. Righty, ladies and gentlemen, as I uh, mentioned in our, our email tonight should be a, a short meeting and we have made our way to um, the general discussion for this evening. Um, I will quickly take the floor very quickly and explain a, a project to you all, and then I will get out of your hair, and, and um, hopefully we can wrap a little bit earlier here. Um, I just want to make a mention to you that the Atlanta Regional Commission and the Nature Conservancy are working together um, with a comprehensive group of area advocates and key decision makers um, to sort of plot out the future of the South River Forest. Um, and so the intent is to determine the boundaries of the South River Forest um, challenges um, and opportunities, um, as well as sort of the key priority areas of focus for uh, the city of Atlanta and DeKalb County. And I bring this up because uh, the training center property is right in the middle of all of um, that South River, or, or in the midst of what the South River Forest uh, vision is inclusive of. And so um, there is an opportunity for public input I do not see a chat for me to drop the link into, so I will um, I will share it out a little bit later, but for those watching that uh, perhaps want to know, um, it's publicinput.com forward slash South River Forest. Um, you can go on and complete the surveys that are on there. You could participate and, and sort of help in the shaping of the vision for what this area ultimately would look like. Um, that input, input obviously would put for, be put forth to the various uh, government entities and ultimately we will see uh, what the South River Forest can be. So I wanted to make mention of that and I also wanna make mention that um, there are a couple of members of this committee that do serve 
um, on the steering committee for that project, as well as um, there are public meetings. The next one is going to be held on September the 6th from 5 p.m. to 7 p.m. So if you all are available um, you know, to attend those meetings and give your input, please do. A location for that September meeting is going to be determined hopefully within the next couple of weeks. And so I will share that information out as well. With that, are there any questions, comments, concerns, or items for general discussion? Well, you all are a very easy crowd this evening. Um, <laughs> with that, we can call our meeting adjourned at 6.32 p.m. Can I get a second? Hey, Madam Chair, I'm sorry. Oh. One second. I would just like to make sure that the record reflects uh, Hollis Turner. I know she joined uh, late, so I just wanted to make sure that we reflected that she is uh, present. We do have her. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Perfect. Well, thank you all for your time this evening. Can I get a second on a motion to adjourn? I say. Second. All right, ladies and gents, we'll see you in about a month. All right. Good night, good night everybody. Good night, everybody. All right. Good night. The recording has stopped.